Well, just like that, another Star Wars show has wrapped up, and it's another show that I am happy with. Star Wars animation always slaps. The majority of good Star Wars storytelling comes from the animation side of things. The end of the Bad Batch signifies the end of an era. The story of Omega and the Bad Batch wrapped up by connecting the end of the Clone Wars into the early days of the Rebellion, particularly thanks to that awesome epilogue. The Bad Batch was a fun show. It was filled with adventure and plenty of cool things sprinkled in between. Yes, there were some filler episodes and times where I was getting a little annoyed by the lack of overall focus for our main characters, but the writing was solid for the most part and the character development was spot on. It wasn't just the character development that was great, but so was the relationships built between the characters. Now, some people didn't like Omega. I personally thought her growth as a character was fantastic and I really enjoyed watching each of her relationships grow with each of the clones of the squad. Season 3 was not the show's best season, but the finale made up for it and wrapped the bow perfectly on the series. So in this video, I am going to review the final season and give my final thoughts on the series as a whole. I remember early last year when I was beginning this YouTube channel, I was making videos on season two. And while I was enjoying the season, I was growing tired of watching filler episodes. The Bad Batch were going on multiple missions for Sid. And while each of those adventures were cool and had some fun to it, I was getting bored. I knew that there would be more to come, but I was beginning the question, when would this happen? Yes, we are experiencing the growth in the characters and more development with the relationships, but what is the big picture? We learned about Tantus, and we were introduced to Dr. Hemlock, and then things changed suddenly near the end of Season 2. Tech died, and Sid betrayed the squad, which led to Hemlock capturing Omega. So after Season 2, I sat there and I was like, damn, that took a turn. And that was good though. The stakes needed to be raised, and we needed to start focusing on what the Bad Batch were going to do, which would define their legacy within this big franchise. Season 3 was more focused than the previous season. However, I was still conflicted on some things. I'll be honest, I was really not feeling this season about halfway through. Yes, it was cool to see Cad Bane and Asajj Ventress again, but they ended up playing small roles in the grand scheme of things. But this being a Clone Wars era show, I was fine with the return of old characters, but it did seem like they were phoning it in at times. There's a lot of things that I am surprised didn't get touched on more in the show, like in the third episode, you know, Palpatine visits and talks about Project Necromancer. That was awesome. I mean, every time you see Palpatine, it's just really cool. And he's just as freaking scary in animated form as he is in live action. But nothing was really explained about why the Empire wanted the blood of Omega and the clones. Yes, we know they are looking for high M counts for whatever reason. Again, what for exactly? It was a clone research project, but what is the goal? There's a few theories out there, you know, is this about making Palpatine clones? Is this to make Force-sensitive clones? Is this to make some sort of super soldier? Like, there's a lot of different things you could do with midichlorian blood, but what exactly do they want? Like, I don't like the fact that they just kept teasing this without actually showing, and really, at the end of the day, we still really never learned that. We learned a few details as time went on, like I said, but really, that was it. And like I said earlier, it was cool to see Ventress again, but honestly, you could argue that she didn't really need to show up. Though I would say she had some character development, though. She's not acting like a Sith anymore when she was with the Separatists during the Clone Wars. And yeah, she's not a good guy, but here she's a little more neutral. She tried to help Omega unlock her Force abilities because of her M count. She could not unlock her abilities, though. And Ventress ended up telling Omega that her M count was low, but she lied. She told the rest of the crew later on that she did possess a high midichlorian count. So it would appear Ventress was protecting Omega, because as we know, in the era of the Empire, life is pretty rough for anybody that is Force-sensitive. So Ventress actually did an admirable thing. The first time we ever saw her do something like that, I'm pretty sure. Not gonna lie, I kinda wish we saw more of Rex, Echo, and even Commander Cody. I'd love to know what Rex and Echo were up to in between the times they would eventually meet up with the Bad Batch. It was awesome to see Commander Cody again in Season 2, and I'm glad Echo was at least back with the squad at the end of the series, though I was scared he wasn't gonna make it out. And again, I'm assuming this is the end of the Clone Wars era, but... I love another show involving the clones, I'm not gonna lie, if they did something on, you know, the events after the Clone Wars surrounding Rex and the clones that got the inhibitor chips out, maybe there's a little clone rebellion, or there are some clones that are a part of the rebellion itself, there's definitely some creativity and some stories that they could come up with there. 
So yeah, those were my little critiques for the final season, but nothing I just mentioned ruined anything for me. I'd say season one, personally, is still my favorite season, but that's okay. The finale is what saved season three for me. That was intense and dramatic. There were many times where I thought to myself, yeah, someone's gonna die here. I was shocked that nobody from the main crew died, and now I know some people have said that they think they played it safe, a little too safe, but there were still some deaths, and, you know, somebody like Nala Say, for example, she did sacrifice herself and destroyed the database, so it wasn't just the bad guys dying at the end. Crosshair also lost his hand, so he's forever going to be changed with that, even though I'm assuming, you know, he's going to be getting the classic Star Wars robotic hand. But also, he was still dealing with the effects of the experiments done on him on Tantus. You know, remember, he was shaky, he wasn't able to really balance himself anymore, so... You know, not everybody walked away without any scratches. And the Bad Batch technically did experience their big loss in Season 2 with Tech's death. And honestly, I'm glad Tech stayed dead. I know some were speculating or hoping that he would return, but you need to keep the stakes high and make sure there's consequences. Also, would we really want to see Tech return? That would more than likely mean that Hemlock picked him up from the fall and probably experimented on him and would eventually turn him into one of those assassin clones. It hurts, but this is probably for the best. And here's the thing, characters dying don't make a finale great. Good storytelling and character development do that. I personally don't think that they gave the show a fairy tale ending, and I'll tell you why. Because I'd like to point out one thing that might ruin your mood here. So, you know, the Bad Batch successfully stopped Project Necromancer, right? You know, they destroyed Tantus. However, that led the Empire to fully focusing on Project Stardust, which was the Death Star Project. So yeah, the Bad Batch technically helped push the Death Star Project forward. And as per usual, you really don't beat Palpatine. I don't think this show is as good as Clone Wars or Rebels, but I don't say that in a bad way. There's more impactful things and characters in those shows, but Bad Batch still serves a purpose. Not every piece of Star Wars has to outdo each other, even like with Tales of the Empire shortly coming out after the finale of Bad Batch. The franchise is huge at this point, and there's a ton of characters, stories, and time periods that can be explored with many stories to tell. I think the reason why I am not too disappointed with the final season is due to the fact that there was a tighter focus. All of the plot points slowly help set the stage for that finale, and at the end, I think it was all worth it. Everything I am bringing up is just really coming from my personal preferences. There's no controversy in this show at all, whether it's season 3, 2, or 1. And of course, there were ups and downs throughout the entire journey for this group, and earning a happy ending was nice to see. Some of the unanswered questions might even open up the door for other storytelling opportunities, and I'm all for that. And I have a feeling we will see Omega again. And if you didn't like her as a kid, well, maybe there's a chance you will grow to appreciate her as an adult during her time with the Rebellion. And I'd like to give a special shout out to Dee Bradley Baker and Michelle Ng for their fantastic voice acting work. I mean, Dee Bradley Baker alone probably deserves a place on the Mount Rushmore of important Star Wars figures. He has done so much for not only this show, but for the franchise as a whole, and to literally voice almost every single main character in a show, that's pretty damn impressive. And let's not forget about the art style. The animation looked great, and it continues to get better and better every year with every animated project. Last year, I was asking about how the Bad Batch would cement their legacy in the Star Wars universe. Well, a year later, they shut down one of the Empire's most sinister projects, they defeated a couple of bad guys, and they were able to rescue some of their fellow clones in the process. I'd say that's a job well done. I'm pleased with the finale of Bad Batch, and I will always look back fondly at this show. Well, thanks for checking out the video. Let me know your thoughts on the final season of Bad Batch, and did you guys enjoy the series as a whole? Tell me your thoughts, and of course, thanks to all of you that are subscribed. If it's your first time coming across my channel, welcome. Go check out some of my other videos. You can also find the audio version of my content on podcasting platforms. Literally just Google Analyze This Podcast. You can also find me on X and TikTok, X at Analyze This underscore YT, and TikTok at Analyze This 54 underscore YT. Thanks again, and take care.